What's up everybody, Tim Vex here and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about... So, if you are an engineer or someone not from the management field, but you are planning to apply for a master's in management or any other management program, then this question might have already popped up in your mind. Now, why is it important to fill the gaps in your CV? Well, think about it. You have been doing a course for three to four years in a field that is not related to what you're applying for. I mean, it's obvious, right? Anyone would get this question in their minds. Like, why are you changing your field from that to this? And all the universities take their degrees very seriously. So instead of offering you an admission blindly, they will check whether the courses that they're offering will actually add value to your future. And if they feel that the course is going to be irrelevant, then no matter how much you plead, they will deny the admission. Your CV has to express your inclination towards the course that you're applying for. So there are like three important things during an application. It's CV, your letter of recommendation and your motivation essay. But for this video, let's stick to the CV. CV is going to play a very major role because CV is the first thing that the university sees when they receive the application, right? So that it's like a snapshot of your academic life so far. So you have to make sure that your CV speaks for you and it reflects what you want to do in the future. So the first thing that you could do to fill the gap in your CV is by doing relevant courseworks. Now, mo some of the universities uh, during undergraduation have this option of doing an elective course. Now, if your university has that option, then try to take some sort of business related subjects for your electives and try to work on them. If your university does not offer you elective options, then you could always go to other platforms like Coursera, NPTEL, and you could do relevant coursework from those websites. Now, the one thing that you need to keep in mind while doing these kind of courseworks on online platforms is that focus your attention towards the knowledge that you're gaining instead of that digital certificate. No one really cares about that certificate, guys. What they do care about is the knowledge that you're gaining after doing the coursework. So if you are mentioning that course on your CV, then make sure that you're able to answer at least some questions related to the course. So my strategy for this would be try to do three to four uh, courses. Or if you're doing it online, then try to do three to four courses, but go deep. Okay, make sure that you learn the subject really well, you understand what they're talking about. And if you're given a job in that field, then make sure that you'll be actually able to add some value while you're working there. Uh, instead of spending your time doing 10, 9 or 10 courses, do 3 to 4 courses, but do them really well. The second way to fill the gaps on your CV is by doing relevant internships. Now, this is again a bit tricky. I mean, if you're an engineer, then you might have to do mandatory internships. But again, these internships are related to what you have been studying, right? So there's no link to what, uh, to what there's no link to what you're going to do in the future. So how are you going to combine this? Well, during your free time, try to do internships on the field that you're interested in. If, if that's business, then try to do internships in the field of business. It is difficult. It is difficult to find internships um, in that domain when you're not studying it at that point but you could always try to convince the employer that you're going to pursue your higher education in that field and this um, experience is going to add a lot of value right what you could do is you could spend your free time while doing that internship if possible you could go to other departments and learn from them if you're working in an mnc i know it is very difficult but if you are working in a small company or some kind of startup then you could actually request your manager to take you to the other departments and you could actually like talk to the people working there. So I personally did that while I was doing my internship at a startup. I used to spend my free time talking to the HR. I used to learn how the company works and what are the skills, relevant skills that are required to run the business aspect of the company. And those things actually helped me a lot. I was able to mention them on my CV and I, I told in my CV that apart from doing my engineering internship, during my free time, I also tried to learn these skills, right? It will tell the higher authorities that 
you are actually interested in this domain and you are actually like actively spending your free time learning some sort of new skills which takes me to the third way to fill the gap and those are the tech skills now i think our generation knows how important the tech skills are and there is a software there is a specific software for every domain and try to learn the skills of these software you don't need to be a complete professional of that software but even the ba even some amount of basic knowledge will help you a long way for example excel excel is like the fundamental of any business right any business excel is very very useful so whenever you have like free time try to learn some skills of excel do some coursework if possible similarly if you are interested in marketing then you should probably spend some time learning tableau software Tableau is again very uh, detailed and very specific software which is required for a business but then again venturing into that side and once you start learning about the software you will understand what it is and you can always mention that on in your CV which will add a lot of value. The fourth thing that you could do to fill the gaps on your CV is to recognize the transferable skills from your hobbies. Now this is really a smart thing to do. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you have to do everything uh, in order to put it on your CV. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you could always pick out the important skills that you are learning from your hobbies and you could mention them in, in your CV in a smart way. For example, if you play sports and you are the captain, then you could always say that you have this leadership skills, which is very, very essential for any business. If you're not the captain, you are playing just in a team, then you could say you're a team player and you could emphasize on your role in that team. Uh, if you play a solo sport, then you could say how practicing the sport every single day uh, improves your focus, how dedicated you are for that sport, right? So basically you're identifying the important skills and you're transferring those skills from your hobbies and you're showing that these skills are actually transferable and you could use it in real world situations as well. It's a win-win situation for everyone here. And finally, the fifth way to fill the gap is through voluntary work. Now, many, many people get confused when I say voluntary work. People immediately think voluntary work refers to working for big NGOs or big companies in order to get a voluntary certificate. No, I mean, that's one way to get a voluntary certificate, but that's not the only way, right? Voluntary work basically means that you are spending some time for the society you're giving your time and effort for the society without expecting any sort of reward or compensation that's what voluntary work means so you could actually do anything like anything can be considered as a voluntary work provided you put spend your time and effort ngos and these companies they make the process simple they facilitate you all right they take your time they take your effort and they channel your time and energy in a direction that solves the matter it's like very systematic but you could always do this without their help as well for example you could spread awareness about a situation to a big group of people through uh, public speaking or through some sort of uh, um, social media campaign that could be considered as a voluntary work you could help people in distress during uh, times of natural disasters like cyclone and stuff like that floods and cyclones so all those things can be considered as voluntary work and you could proudly mention that on, on your CV. So that's all guys. These were my five tips on how to fill the gaps on your CV and how to bridge the difference between coming from an engineering background to a management background. So I hope you found this video to be useful. If you did, then please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and I will catch up with you all in the next one. Till then, goodbye.